This video is the dramatic conclusion to my Una trilogy. This is going to be my Return of the King or the Jedi, depending on your want. Now I have camped in the Highlands of Scotland. I have camped in the forests of Sweden. So I know that feeling of being too afraid to stop cycling, because if you do, the clouds of midges and mosquitoes drifting like hungry smoke through the trees will smell you, descend on you and devour you. In these situations, all you can really do is pitch up as fast as you can, get zipped in, spend the rest of the evening killing intruders with a pair of pants rolled up inside a sock. And if you're in a small tent, which I usually am, then you can look forward to quite a confined evening under canvas. Now the Una is a small tent. If you haven't seen the previous two instalments of this epic trilogy, I'll link to them somewhere. But it is a small tent. And what we're going to look at today is an optional attachment that aims to give you a bit more bug-free space when you're out and about using it in the wild. So the double bubble is made up of two parts. The floor is the footprint from the ground conversion kit, which we saw in a previous video. Nothing new there. The walls are then made up of this single unit hanging bug net. This attaches to the footprint and then up to the tent body itself. Now, the ground conversion kit was pushing the limits of what I would consider to be a practical volume of gear to take with me as a bike packer. This is well beyond that. There's no way this is coming on a road with me. It's just too bulky. Car camping, yeah, I'd take it with me. And there's possibly an argument to say that because this is gonna add a whole extra load of space to this tent, maybe it turns the Una into a two-man tent. Maybe you could share the load with a buddy I don't know, I haven't actually pitched this yet, so let's get it up, we'll have a proper look, see what we think then. The setup is pretty straightforward, as long as you get everything laid out right. Turns out that it is possible and quite easy to get the netting part inside out and or upside down, in which case the little clippy straps won't line up properly, the zips won't line up properly, and basically the whole thing won't go together. Make sure when you're laying it all out that your short wall is at the head end and that the zip entry is on the right hand side if you're looking down from the head end towards the foot end. That way everything will be uh, in line and everything will go together. After that it's simple, you just you throw your footprint out, you peg it down roughly lining up with the tent body, clip the corners of the mesh over the corners of the suspended body that will kind of give you a rough line up for everything then you can easily attach the zips zip them up and the last thing is just to put these longer clippy straps over and that kind of cinches everything in and closes up some of the gaps straightforward so i have a couple of concerns questions about this after having set it up there are straps I don't understand for point one. So there are straps which are part of the ground conversion kit that come off the footprint. I understand those. There are straps attached to the bug netting part that I don't see what they're for. The only thing that I can see they can do is clip together underneath the floor, but I don't understand what that would achieve. So I don't know if I'm possibly missing something there. More research needed, I think. My other issue is going to be one of gaps. There are gaps in your fly sheet at the three corners where the zips and everything meet up. Hi, future Jethro here. Just chipping in from downstream. As you can see, I wear a hat in the future. You're about to see me realize that by cinching up the top corner straps really tight, you effectively close all the gaps along the top between the tent body and the top of the bug net. What I'm not going to realise until I come to edit this footage 
is that you can do a similar thing with the bottom corner straps as well. You can cinch those all up tight and it kind of gathers the fabric of the footprint and the net together and goes a long way towards closing the bottom corner holes, which I'm about to complain about. Now it's not 100%, there is still a small gap there. Bugs could still potentially get in, but it does a pretty good job of it. And if you wanted to go further, you could throw a cable tie around there or a loop of cord of some sort and really close it up almost completely. So I just wanted to come back, film this little cut in shot, just to say that the gappage issues which I'm about to highlight are not as serious as I might make out. They are there to consider, but correct pitching is definitely going to minimise them. So having done that, I will now hand you back to past Jethro. Please don't judge him too harshly. He's young and foolish, whereas I am a grizzled veteran with nearly two weeks more life experience. So what can you do? See you in the future, people. Some of the meet up. Um, they're not huge, but they're definitely big enough for mosquitoes to get in if they're determined. The other place where there are gaps is all around the edge. See? This is just kind of held up by the straps. Um, there's not a massive amount of stuff, but it seems to me, I mean, there are these toggles here that are used for holding the um, underfloor storage unit on the Una. I would have kind of thought that there'd be some way for the, the netting itself to mate with those. Either that or a zip, like on the bottom. That may be a weight consideration, not having that, but then maybe just a few really well-placed um, Velcro pads would do it along the seam of the tent and the seam of the, the net. That, that could do the job. It's maybe not a huge issue. They might gape a little bit if someone was in the tent bouncing around, but as it is, you know, it's probably fine for this part of the world. I wouldn't want to use it in a malaria zone, probably. But there are actually mosquitoes around in the woods. I've lost a bit of blood to them already. So let's get in, see what it's like inside. So I've been in here now for about 10 or 15 minutes, reviewing some footage, gathering my thoughts, and it's a really nice space. You can stretch out in here, you can sit up in here, you could cook in here. It's noticeably warmer in here, so it's insulated enough that you could sleep in here. Before I got in, I went round and I cinched up all the corner straps as tight as I could, and that's gone a long way towards sealing up those gaps along the top. Uh, so I'm not worried about those now. There are still the gaps at the three corners. They are a bit of a consideration. This part of the world, we get the big leggy mosquitoes and this will keep them out. We don't get the big clouds of gnats and midges. And I think if you were in a Swedish forest or you were in a Scottish bog, then those big clouds of gnats and midges, at least some of them would find their way in through those corners. I could be wrong. I'm not an expert in midge hunting technique. Uh, maybe they don't forage close to the ground or something, I don't know. But it would definitely be something to consider depending on what part of the world you're going to and what parasites you're expecting. Beyond that, I think this is one of those things that if you need it, you'll love it. If you don't need it, you'll wonder what the point is and think it seems a bit weird. Um, I would say if you have a bigger model tensile, a three-person model, it would be brilliant because the three-person equivalent double bubble would give you a massive amount of extra space and be well worth the extra pack weight and bulk. For the Una, if you're travelling as a pair and one of you doesn't mind sleeping downstairs, then potentially it could be pretty cool. It turns you one man into a two man. Um, bearing in mind 
that to pitch this, you have to find your three trees, but they also have to be over some vaguely level and solid ground. So it does limit your pitching options. For me personally, as a solo cyclist, it's too big and it's too bulky to be a practical consideration. I would like to have it with me because it's, it's cool, but it, it wouldn't fit on the bike. So it wouldn't come away with me. Um, I think that's about all I've got to say, really. It's, it's a modular thing, so you make your choice. You know, if you've got the Una, you decide whether you also want to tack on the ground conversion kit, you want to tack on the double bubble. It's there if you want it. Uh, I think I've shown you all the pertinent details. If I've missed anything, if you have any questions, shout out in the comments. Um, and please consider liking, subscribing, hit the button, hit the bell, all that jazz. And yeah, there'll be more videos coming soon. More reviews, more rides, more philosophy of the saddle. I will see you all soon. Bye now.